Hey, Science Science, and welcome to topic 2.3 of the Space Exploration Unit. We're going to be talking about using space technology to meet human needs here on Earth. Now, we've discussed a lot about technologies like rocketry, uh, telescopes, uh, you know, different technologies that are going to allow us to live in space. Um, these are all fine and dandy if you're doing space exploration. However, some of these technologies that have been designed for these purposes have now also been uh, have been able to improve technologies for people in their everyday lives here on Earth. So there may be some uh, innovations here on Earth that you never thought about that would have been associated initially with uh, space exploration, but have now been used uh, in our day-to-day -day lives as well. So one of them that I discussed uh, at the beginning of this topic in 2.1 when we discussed uh, technologies of space, uh, of space uh, transportation were uh, artificial satellites. Artificial satellites have been around since 1957 when Sputnik went into orbit. The uh, Sputnik 1, the first uh, Soviet satellite, the Americans put uh, uh, Explorer 1 and 58 into orbit, and then the Canadians got on board uh, soon afterward with their first telecommunication satellites, the Alouette 1. But there's uh, hundreds, hundreds of space satellites out there that are doing a whole host of things that are making our lives here on Earth better. Obviously, one of them is communication, telecommunication, phone, internet, TV, business, finance. They're all using these, these uh, satellites that are in orbit to basically help us with stuff down here, even in our own homes, right? If you have even satellite TV, if you've got it, there's a reason why it's called satellite TV. Uh, how about observation and research? Uh, if you use Google Earth, right? Google Earth is basically compiled together from satellite uh, images, right? Uh, as well as other ways to monitor things like weather. We have weather satellites, right? We've got uh, ways to monitor uh, forest fires uh, when they're happening. You, know, you may have heard of some of the big forest fires that occurred uh, recently in Alberta or in uh, uh, Brazil or in Australia. They were all sort of tracked by satellites once they broke out to see the extent of these fires. Um, what, about, uh, what about climate change? We can, we can actually observe changes in temperature around the planet. Uh, there, are, there are satellites that actually monitor levels of CO2 and uh, oxygen in the atmosphere. So there's a lot of things that these satellites can do for us in the, in, in the area of observation and research. What about navigation? GPS. If you've got GPS on your phone, on your car, uh, lots of devices have GPS. Global positioning satellites are involved with that. Hence the name GPS, global positioning satellites. These satellites have a special designation as well. They're called geosynchronous satellites. A geosynchronous satellite is a satellite that basically is in a very high orbit around the Earth, and it, it orbits at the same time that the Earth rotates. So basically, a geosynchronous satellite is always going to point down on the same part of the Earth all the time. So as the Earth is turning, the satellite is sort of turning with it. So they're moving together. It's not like a satellite that spins around the Earth as the Earth is sort of slowly spinning, and then this satellite is spinning much quicker than the Earth, uh, that isn't going to help us if we, if we have a, a global positioning uh, satellite. We need to have it focused on one part of the Earth all the time so that devices can connect to that to see where we are in position around the world. So that's what a geosynchronous satellite is. And geo meaning Earth and synchronous meaning stationary. So it's the Earth stationary satellite is basically what it means. Um, okay. What else can we do? Well, before I do this, watch the video here. It's going to give you a list of all sorts of things in your day-to-day -day lives that uh, space technology is made better. Uh, so if you want to watch that video, go ahead and watch that now. But I'll quickly go through a few of them. Things like microelectronics. We talked about uh, scrubbers, smokestack scrubbers. We discussed them in Unit C uh, with uh, the chemistry of the environment uh, and basically how they can remove uh, uh, sulfur dioxide. Uh, emissions from coal-fired power plants to reduce the amount of acid deposition that's occurring. So that technology of smokestack scrubbers originally came from uh, technologies that were used for space uh, exploration. Um, a virtual reality uh, technology is also one. Uh, food preservation techniques that have been used to preserve food for astronauts and people you know, in space on the ISS, these food preservation techniques are also now used here on Earth. Uh, improved sporting equipment. Everything from helmets to golf balls to shoe design are all based on uh, technology and, and innovations that have occurred in space exploration technology. Voice control systems are another one. 
improved rubber for tires is another great one. Uh, the space shuttles uh, had to design special tires to, you know, that massive impact when they were landing that improved the actual rubber on the tires, and that's now been transferred to vehicles all around the world. And as well, there's a lot of advances with robotics related to space technologies that we're now using uh, here on Earth. So a lot of benefits to us exploring space, not just for the fact that we're learning about stuff that's going on in other parts of the universe, but there is benefits right here, uh, you know, to us on a day-to-day -day level here on planet Earth. Uh, so that's it for the topic today. Uh, your questions for homework are going to be uh, only four. You're going to have questions one, two, and three, and question eight on page 432 of the textbook. That is it for today. Uh, join me next time when I start our discussion on topic 3.1, which will be using technology to see the visible. I'm going to talk to you more specifically now about telescopes. So won't you join me next time? Uh, we're going to put Galileo to shame.